All right. Hi, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to today's Maximo is only the beginning webinar featuring augmented reality, enabling frontline workers. We're going to get started in just about one minute while we give everyone a chance to join. But we've got a great presentation prepared for you today and an even better speaker to help keep us all energized throughout this online event. Um, again, we're going to give it just about a minute. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to cover just a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, the meeting is being recorded. We will share that recording um, after the webcast. We do ask that everyone stay muted and we'll have some time at the end for Q&A, but please feel free to submit your questions uh, throughout the session at any time using the chat window, which should be on the right-hand side of your screen. We do have uh, Rachel Freeman joining from Aquitas to help moderate that chat window and help us with some interactive polls. So feel free to test out that chat window, say hi to Rachel, tell your favorite costume you saw on Halloween or not, totally up to you. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in. I see more people coming in now. So again, to those of you just joining, welcome to today's webinar, Augmented Reality, Enabling Frontline Workers. I am Maddie Hawkins. I joined Aquitas about seven and a half years ago. I lead our go-to-market strategy around IoT and augmented reality, or what we call connected maintenance solutions that extend what you can do with Maximo. Today, we're really excited to feature some of those augmented reality solutions through a fantastic partner joining me here today from PTC. Wayne Edwards is an augmented reality specialist with over 30 years experience. He specializes in helping enterprises to deploy augmented reality solutions in order to accelerate the time to proficiency for their frontline workforce. Wayne has spent his career helping companies in various industries to improve business performance through digital transformation. And we're really excited to have him here today to support us. But before I hand it over to Wayne, I want to give a quick introduction to Aquitas and our partnership with PTC. Uh, Aquitas was founded in 2006. We're a service-disabled, better-known small business based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And the way that most of you probably know us already is that we're a long-time uh, gold-certified IBM business partner that specializes in experts in all things Maximo. Uh, we work with customers across industries, and a few years ago, we started shifting into this IoT space and partnered with PTC back in 2017 initially driven by our need to integrate their industrial IoT platform ThingWorks to Maximo to help our Maximo customers start shifting from reactive to proactive and then predictive maintenance. And the success of that partnership really jump-started uh, this journey of building a connected maintenance portfolio that you see represented here on the right of the screen. And our goal is to bring value add solutions to our Maximo customers, because just like the theme of this whole webcast series, Maximo is only the beginning. Um, and actually, Wayne, if you can click one more time, I think there's a little build, you know, especially in the last couple of years, we've all had to adjust the way we work, many of us remotely, and we've seen the need for and the value that can be achieved with augmented reality and maintenance. It's become more and more evident which is why, Wayne, I've said it a million times, I'm so excited to have you joining us today to help introduce some of these great solutions. So I say it's time to get the real fun started and I will pass it over to you. Fantastic, thank you, uh, Maddie and, and Rachel and everyone joining today. It's a pleasure to be with you guys today. It's an honor to partner with Aquitas. Um, and so my name is Wayne Edwards. I'll be uh, guiding us through this conversation today. Hopefully uh, you guys will have some uh, some good questions for us toward the end here. So. Let's get started. You know, this really is about enabling the frontline workers. And so as we uh, look at some of the topics that we're going to talk to today, I'm going to ask you to put on, uh, look through this in a couple of different lens. We have different roles on the call, different organizations from different industries. You know, think about it from an executive point of view. What are some of the industry challenges that you're dealing with um, as it relates to the workforce, you know, and trying to you know, run the business from the, uh, the top line and the bottom line performance? You know, think about how you're running the business from the traditional methods today with this uh, challenges with the with the workforce today. You know, what are some of the methods of how we're, you know, onboarding folks and, uh, you know, trying to train them so that they can accelerate their time to proficiency as fast as possible, as safe as possible. So we're going to look at some of the traditional methods today and then really pivot toward how does augmented reality help with this particular situation? So how does AR help? Uh, improve the performance and the time to proficiency for the frontline workers. And in doing that, we're going to review uh, the portfolio that we have as PTC. Our, our portfolio for AR is called Vuforia, and we're going to look at that portfolio, look at some of the use cases that the customers are using today, 
and some of the benefits that they are getting from leveraging uh, this type of capability. And uh, hopefully a lot of you guys will have some questions regarding how do we get started if we want to uh, join the journey of augmented reality. So we'll talk a little bit about that toward the end and again, have some questions um, for you guys. So let's, um, let's look at these industry challenges. You know, one thing I really like about um, being in this space is that we really are trying to help uh, these uh, frontline workers, your most invaluable uh, resources. So, you know, prior to COVID, we actually had this slide as well. And a lot of these different analysts, you know, acknowledge that these were some of the challenges happening uh, prior to COVID. You know, most customers, most companies were running at full capacity, you know, and, uh, and so really it was really around time to uh, proficiency. How do we accelerate, uh, you know, perform the needs of the market and our customers? Uh, with the challenges of the constraints we had with uh, other areas regarding the workforce in the facility. So uh, obviously COVID came along, has changed a lot of things, uh, but some of these variables have, have remained the same. And, uh, and so obviously the, uh, the COVID impact on the right here, as you see, but I really want to draw your attention to uh, these issues here and, and let you kind of look at some of those quotes. You know, obviously there's a, you know, challenges in the marketplace today, uh, with an aging and retiring workforce. Uh, there are, you know, traditional methods, maybe not as effective as some of the modern methods, and hopefully you agree with that from our conversation today. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to recruit uh, the newer generation workforce into some of the work environments that we work with in the day. Maybe they want to, uh, if they don't see it as, uh, as high tech or how technology can be applied. So we want to address that issue. And of course, really, focus on that frontline worker and being able to make sure they have the information they need so that they can feel confident to do the job that you've hired them for, they feel safe, and they really can be a contributor to your business goal. So before we go on further here, I just want to ask, uh, we're going to ask, take one little quick poll here and ask you guys a question. You know, is there one of these primary challenges that you are addressing today, maybe that you came to the uh, webinar with thoughts in mind, one of these issues here, maybe something be uh, you know top of mind that you might be dealing with today here. All right, Wayne, we'll give it about 15 to 20 seconds here to let attendees answer the poll, and then I'll close it. Fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and close, share the results. So it looks like 15% of people said uh, skills gap between current and new workers, 46% said large population of aging or retiring workforce in the next three to five years, 23% said need more modern training methods, no one said improved perception of work environment, and 15% uh, said current frontline workers need better information to learn. Fantastic. Great, so thank you guys for that. And uh, we'll have a couple more uh, polls for you today. So hopefully uh, we'll uh, be ready there. So one thing really interesting, if you look at the you know nearly 3 billion workers in the workforce today, you know that's interesting that Forrester in this study identified that uh, only 23% identified they have what they need to do their job. So that means there's a 75% of the workforce out there that are frontline workers, you know, probably don't have a laptop or, or a digital information available at their fingertips available for them today. I know many customers that I have worked with over the last few years have, you know, tried to digitize more information to the frontline workers in the in the context of, you know, mobile phones, uh, tablets, and a lot of customers that we have uh, met, you know, have really tried to look at, you know, okay, now that we have a device for a frontline worker, how do we get them better information? So those are some of the topics that we're going to address today is how does AR uh, allow us to have better content for these folks? Understanding too that there's uh, you know many types of frontline workers from utility spaces to hospitals to healthcare, industrial, manufacturing, uh, you know, so uh, lots of different frontline workers out there who really need the right information to do the job. So Hopefully you'll agree today that AR is going to empower these frontline workers. We're going to give you a potential solution to help you improve their productivity at the same time, 
uh, helping with some of the cost variables as well as the safety and compliance and an overall impact to quality. So it's direct impact to the top and bottom line. So let's talk about, there's lots of options that you have out there for being able to improve the business. So how does augmented reality specifically help? So let's take this first topic here of the aging workforce. So I think many of us know that there's a lot of knowledge in, uh, in our workforce that has been doing the job for a long time. We rely on those folks often when we're trying to create uh, standard operating procedures or training content or you know, to onboard new workers. So there's a lot of information that's out there uh, that really captures how do we actually do that. So one of the solutions I'm going to share with you today is a part of our, our augmented reality portfolio that allows you to capture that domain knowledge in the context of that subject matter expert. And one of the benefits that our customers have found is that they can actually create better content and faster. And so obviously there'll be a lot of benefits to that if you're trying to produce uh, better content for your workforce, you know, that you want to digitize standard operating procedures that are current, that are active and keep those active. And the value of having these better work instructions and procedures is now that we can incorporate them into our onboarding process for our new employees. So the traditional onboarding process of you know, training, how do I leverage this new, better content to provide faster and better training? And so what many of our customers have identified is that they can actually train folks faster, but even more so the fact that the, in, the retention rate is much higher. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more so today and let you see that. So if I've got three big areas I want you to think about right now around the benefit of augmented reality, one is that I can create better content faster, and I can leverage this content while I'm training a new person, folks so help them while they're learning the job, and then also when they leave the training organization and go to do the job, they have the same act content for doing the job. Obviously, with a well-equipped workforce, uh, things will operate much more efficient. The, the person will be more efficient, they'll feel safer, uh, there'll be direct impact to your bottom line, less scrap, less rework, you know, people being able to do the job right uh, correctly, uh, do it faster, fewer errors, and having to uh, disrupt other people a lot less overall quality to you. So these are the three big areas we'll focus on a little bit more so today here is being able to leverage um, AR in these areas. Uh, there's also a lots of other areas where a lot of our customers are, depending on your product and your industry, you know, want to use augmented reality for not only um, is for uh, sales and marketing use cases. You know, if you've got a physical product that you want to take out to the marketplace or you want to take it to a trade show and I want to be able to highlight new features, I want to be able to show people options and variants. You know, how do I take that product to the field uh, and allow people to actually experience and interact with it prior to uh, the whole development process? Also, having this content available now via this digital library, uh, you know, augmented reality, these work instructions are really going to be focused on how do I do the job, right? And so being able to have this digital library, I also have the ability now to do more self-service. You know, I can search for other procedures that maybe you'll be able to guide me on how to perform a certain task. So these are some of the key areas where AR is going to, to fit into. So let's talk one about one more particular areas around onboarding before we jump into the portfolio of the solutions. So I want you to uh, think about how you onboard new folks today. And maybe you play in one of these roles here. So, you know, new person starts today and they show up in a classroom and that person in red is collected, has created a lot of content to actually share with them, you know, how to perform the job that they've been hired to do. So they're, you know, they're, they're getting a lot of information from PowerPoint or PDFs or things of that nature. Uh, so now they're getting exposed for the first time Often they may leave that training classroom with and or without any documentation and now go get teamed up with a team member or a mentor to actually help them actually experience doing the job for the first time with the subject matter expert. Maybe there's some documentation out there. Maybe it's the similar documentation to training, often different, uh, but obviously this is the traditional process. We like to think about this as you're training a new person. Let's tell them everything they need to know just in case they need that when they're out there doing the job. And obviously this is a maybe has some good intentions behind it, but as we all know, uh, our retention rates, our ability to retain that information when we need it can be can be less, can be more challenging. So what augmented reality is going to bring to the table 
is give us those work instructions in a step-by-step -step way, uh, just in time, as we call it, as opposed to just in case, so that as I am performing that job, uh, you know, I'll be able to follow the step-by-step -step instructions. So what I've seen with a lot of our customers is that they have been able to take now that I have this new augmented reality work instruction. So that when I hire a new person, I'm actually going to show them in the training class. And, you know, and quite honestly, many customers don't have formalized training classes as well, but you can at least educate them on here's how to access the work instructions or the standing operating procedures to perform the task. You know, here's the devices that we will have available to you while you're learning the job and doing the job, you know, whether um, it's on a phone or a tablet or, or a hands-free device. So the nice thing is that you can take this digital playbook, this digital library of how to do your job and expose them to this now. And so that now when I go out and work with my mentor, I actually have that same digital playbook. And now I'm experiencing that, that digital work instructions in the context of the physical world, probably for the first time with my mentor or my subject matter expert. What's unique about this situation or too often that person who's mentoring you was a contributor to creating this AR content that was perhaps used in the training process as well as during this process here. So now I'm getting to see the step-by-step -step how to do it that I was exposed to in the training in the context of the real world. And now that when I'm on my own and doing the job, I actually have that same digital playbook. So really the, the secret here is the fact that we actually have this digital work instruction that is consistent, that has been standardized. And so that from day one, I can learn how to, um, I can I can learn how to do the job during the training, the mentorship, and doing the job, and it's the same playbook uh, throughout the whole process. So this has been extremely effective for really being able to uh, accelerate that whole time to proficiency. So I know many of you guys, um, you know, want to know what does this technology actually look like, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But just one last slide here. Uh, is that there has to be value associated with doing augmented reality. So um, it's it's uh, there, these are some of the areas that a lot of our customers are trying to achieve uh, whenever they um, have a strategy or a digital uh, plan for being able to incorporate AR. You know, they're looking at ways and getting these kind of results our customers are for us, being able to reduce the training time and cost uh, the whole time to create this content. And again, a direct correlation to lowering the scrap and rework. Uh, reducing the downtime and reducing the in injury. So we've got one more poll here now before we move on to the actual portfolio. We'd like to understand um, perhaps from you guys, what is the primary area of improvement you would like to achieve if you were to implement augmented reality? Is there a business driver? Is there a business challenge that you're really focused on that, uh, that caused you to show up today? Give it just a second here. All right, about 10 more seconds. Okay, interesting results, Wayne. We've got 56% saying reduce training cost and time, 38% said reduce downtime, 6% reduce time to author content. Fantastic. So hopefully, uh... Good news is that uh, hopefully you, you'll know that people are getting these benefits and we'll share with you a little bit more about how you can learn more about how you can achieve these benefits at the end of the presentation today. So let's move right into uh, what does this actually look like? You know, a lot of people have a different perceptions of augmented reality. A lot of times people's perceptions come from maybe previous experience with virtual reality or watching some TV shows. But uh, just a quick, you know, difference there. Obviously, virtual reality, we are going to another place. We're going to Mars or we're going to uh, another place. With augmented reality, we are bringing digital information into our physical world. You know, often we're no longer going to use the uh, the paper books, the PDF files, the PowerPoints. We're going to be able to access content just in time as we perform these procedures. Now, a lot of times, too, people think about augmented reality with the uh, with the smart glasses, as you see here. And uh, obviously, they, there's a lot of benefit to being able to do that. But I also want to make you uh, obviously let you know, obviously, you get these benefits leveraging things as well as like phones and tablets and 
um, even PCs. And so we're going to talk about today, how do I get the benefit of this across uh, different device strategies that we want to use? So regardless of what your device strategy is, you know, we're going to talk about today is how do I actually create better content that will really connect my frontline worker to be able to have the information they need while they're doing the job or while they're learning the job so they can be guided through doing the task and know exactly what they need to do in a step-by-step -step mode. So this is just one good picture here. Um, what's really uh, interesting is that our customers are using this across the in complete employee life cycle. As many of you guys may know of the challenges today in the workforce of just trying to attract you know, new workers, the best workers into our workforce. Many of our clients are using uh, augmented reality and uh, was they're going out to technical fairs and for recruitment and you know of uh, new people and uh, and so it's been very 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 effective in those areas as well. So let's look at some of the use cases that we're going to focus on today. So I'm going to give you guys examples of using the PTC View for your AR portfolio and show you some of these different use cases in the areas of remote assistance and collaboration. You know how do I generate and create uh, knowledge-based AR work instructions? Um, how do I leverage work instructions when I have 3D CAD, so 3D CAD-based work instructions? Um, what if I want to have AR work instructions that's uh, integrated with my IoT environment that's very immersive? We'll show you a little bit of that. And then, of course, around AR product visualizations and demonstrations. So let's take a look at our first uh, solution here. Uh, like probably many of you guys, PTC has a broad portfolio of offerings. We want to provide the right solution to solve the right problem. Uh, based upon the customer's uh, business goals, uh, depending on what they're trying to accomplish, also around their digital strategy and the maturity models of uh, where they are. Uh, and so we have a different solution for each area. So the first one I'm going to focus on here is around uh, remote uh, assistance and collaboration. Application here called Euphoria Chalk. So this is obviously was very, very, very effective uh, during the COVID situation. Where a lot of folks were not able to travel. Matter of fact, PTC provided this uh, during the first 79 months of the uh, pandemic, where you know basically from my device to your device, I can call you, and you can see what I see uh, from my device to your device. You know, many of us may have experienced this with things like FaceTime, uh, and that's kind of interesting that I can see what you can see and that I can hear your voice and you can hear my voice. But what this really lends itself is the ability to also take it to a whole nother level of being able to. Uh, augment that environment with uh, markups. So it's a better way to collaborate here. So let me give you an example here. A worker can call another worker from a phone to phone or phone to desktop. And you'll see here these, uh, these, these markups. So I can explain to you, obviously I can talk to you, I can actually draw on my screen and you will see it on your screen. Uh, this also works with hand-free devices so that if I'm off-site or on a job site working, I can call you and allow you to come into my environment. So a lot of our customers who have field workers who call back to a help desk or folks that have dealer networks where um, you know they train their dealers and dealers can call back to the company. It's also very effective in use cases where you want you know, end user consumers to call you and, and talk to you. What you're seeing here is the ability to, to dial folks within your own company via an address book. You also can be an external worker here I'm just providing a what we call a connect code just as you have a, an access code for this uh, go to meeting today and that person doesn't need to be a user they just you send them a nine digit code they're able to uh, launch into your work environment and so they can see what you can see you can do things like obviously mark up the environment you can turn the flashlight on you know you capture that whole conversation so this is very handy when you're out there doing the job and you get stuck and you need to call someone for help, whether they're inside your company or whether they're uh, outside your company. You also can have multiple users. So what if you call, I call Maddie and Maddie decides, hey, let me dial in Rachel so we can have up to five people in this session uh, providing guidance on how to resolve this particular issue. What's really nice about this particular application too is that once our session is complete, we capture a summary of this particular uh, conversation and able to use this back for being able to incorporate this into maybe additional training materials in the future. We could associate it with a help desk ticket. We could use it as a tech tip if 
this happens to be a particular common issue that folks are having. So this is really a powerful, very effective, uh, easy to deploy. You literally just access the application from your device and you're off and running. So I uh, would encourage anyone who has wants to collaborate and connect with workers both inside the company and outside the company. This is a very effective tool, has no requirements for as um, we support all different devices, Android, iOS, et cetera. So can leverage the devices you already have in the field. So let's move on here to, uh, this is some of the use cases that um, typically uh, are supported for this particular environment. You can imagine it's a technician to technician, worker to worker, or worker to help desk, or customer, et cetera. So lots of, lots of different areas to leverage that particular capability. Lots of customers leveraging this as well. Uh, and so we've got plenty of, uh, you can find on our website, ptc.com, examples of different customers who are using this here to improve their business. So let's go on now to, that's a great application for, you know, I'm in, a, I'm, I'm in a jam, I'm stuck, I need to call someone, I need help right now. You know, the ideal world though, let's give people better work instructions so that they can actually perform the job right the first time and, uh, and leverage this content again while they're training and doing the job. So this first application here is called Expert Capture. What's really was nice, this was uh, was brought to market about two and a half years ago with the intent that a lot of people had paper-based work instructions or they had PDF work instructions, uh, but they really were kind of outdated. They weren't really current, they weren't accurate. Uh, you know, this is really nice to be able to generate multi-step work instructions, does not require any existing assets. So what you're gonna see here, I'm gonna show you how we leverage this particular application for to create any type of how to work instruction how to do anything that can be used by uh by the workforce so let me let you see a quick picture here and then i'll walk you through some of the how-to capabilities so here's an example of a expert worker that has a lot of knowledge he's going to perform a task on the job so we're going to capture his knowledge while he performs the task and then we'll take that knowledge that he creates he's going to create a a video that's going to incorporate voice, he's going to take pictures, and he's going to do it in a multi-step mode, and he's going to actually track the location markers of where he needs to have what information at what time, and then you're going to see a worker come on board and actually execute this here. Then we'll get into a little bit more detail. So here he is. The software for capture runs on the device. It supports multiple devices. This happens to be a HoloLens 2 here. He's actually just doing the job. So if it's a 20-minute task, this is how long it would take. You'll see the menu there floating in space. Here he just used the voice command, take photo. And he was able to create a digital asset at a given step. So you'll notice here that he's actually operating here at step six. Um, he's creating content at each step of the process. This is the second component that I'll show you. Once you've captured that knowledge, you just bring it into our authoring application and allow you to enhance that knowledge. And here's just a quick example of someone who can leverage that knowledge to actually perform the task. This happens to be a 10-step process. Here we're leveraging digital guidance for to guide you where to go from step to step. And when you get there, the information relevant to that given step is available to you. So at step six, here's the instructions for step six. Step seven, here's the instructions for step seven. Those instructions can be in the format of video, they can be in the format of voice, they can be in the format of marked up images, et cetera and all that content was captured while we actually um, created it. So what I wanna do is just kind of show you um, kind of the workflow associated with this particular process, because often people wanna know, you know, how does this work? So again, there's a component of the software called capture, hence knowledge capture, right? We're gonna put this on the device. The subject matter expert who's performing the task will just follow the voice commands leveraging these devices, next step, take photo, you know, here's how you perform step two, here's the objectives of step three. And you capture that digital process. So you can see how now we're leveraging that knowledge of that frontline worker to create the digital version of this particular procedure. And now you can actually have that particular same subject matter expert or someone else take that digital work instruction and now enhance it. We can, you know, do voiceovers, we can support multiple languages, we can actually, um, you know, edit the audio and the video and mark up the picture. So really bring in external content to provide a nice a digital work instruction that you now can be executed across your workforce. So what's really powerful about this here, 
I may have leveraged a hands-free device to create this content. I edited it, enhanced it, and you know, all this is access control. It's all version control, so we know what version one, version two, version three. When we publish this procedure, this work instruction is available for the workforce. We know who can access this content, and we also, they can access it on any device just by publishing it. We don't have to format it for the Android versus the iOS, or for the PC, or for the, the real world device versus the HoloLens. So, this content now is available real time for you to be able to consume this content. You also have the ability to collect data during that content, as you'll see here in the next uh, slide too. So if you're doing an inspection process or you're asking them to confirm that you have your PPE on, you know, you can ask for feedback like con confirmations and we will record that for the last component here you see called insights. So here we're actually, this is actually more than just a work instruction, work instruction authoring application. We're actually going to track uh, the usage of this here, we're going to be able to collect data, so we're going to be able to tell you how long it's taking to perform these procedures, which step may be causing uh, the most time within the process, so that if you see that step seven really is requiring the bottleneck, maybe we need to go and look at step seven and break it into two steps or do some additional training there. So just really having the analytics to go back and see, you know, how do we really improve this process? Uh, today, it's really hard to do that. Um, if you don't really have any analytical data to really understand, you know, how is the first shift doing versus the second shift or someone with six months experience versus six years experience. So again, executing this in the field now gives you the data to analyze how are we doing this, these work instructions and how could we improve them here. So this is really allowing you to do expert capture these digital work instructions. And what we found with a lot of our customers is that, you know, this is an example of a customer who actually did a benchmark. Uh, they took 16 employees, they trained on this 22-step process. Eight of them did it the traditional way, and eight of them did it following the work instruction with expert capture. Actually, this was done on a tablet, just so you guys know um, what the device was. And, and you'll see that they were able to, um, you know, achieve the, the objectives of really being able to drive more of a consistent behavior, better quality, and be able to execute in quarterly. So this is really the metrics that really validates that, you know, if people have a good set of work instructions, have a good playbook and can, you know, it's easy to follow uh, and easy to execute, you can get the desired results uh, that you're looking for with a uh, conform, uh, you know, time to proficiency uh, for your workforce. Here's an example of some of the traditional use cases. Again, pretty much anything to do with how to uh, how to operate equipment, how to assemble the equipment, how to do changeovers, how to do, you know, you know, any kind of maintenance procedures. I mean, just really any things that you would you would think of, lockout, tagouts, you know, again, anything that you want to digitize that working step procedure and then leverage that content for uh, training the new worker and then making this available while they learn the job and while they do the job. Those are two of my favorite taglines. So uh, you know, good work instructions can allow you to learn the job faster and do the job better. All right, so let's move on here. Euphoria Instruct. So I've got these great work instructions. I also would have this 3D. Maybe we design equipment. You know, we design products that we actually have designed and manufactured this particular product or equipment, and we have the 3D content, and we would like to incorporate some, uh, some uh, additional uh, 3D content into these inspection procedures. So this is a, a product that we introduced called Instruct has been on the market for about six months now. And I think this one is best represented by just letting you see what happens. So here we actually have a procedure that has multiple steps. In this case here, it has an iPad. So think about your particular product that you may have to go out into the field to inspect, whether it's a maintenance inspection or a you know, post-production inspection. Here it's gonna give you the multi-step process. So here it's telling you step one, I recognize this physical product because of the CAD data. It knows step one tells you I need to go and inspect this break. It knows where that is. It's going to guide you to the where the break is. It's going to give you job aid. So here's an example of an image. I want to review how to perform this procedure. Here's a video of how to actually perform the task at hand. So I have these job aids at each given step. Here's an example of collecting data. You know, is the break properly attached? I can say yes. And now it's writing that off to the database. As the user frontline worker here, I just now go on to step two. Think about a new worker. You know, he's trying to learn these products, learn how to do these procedures here. We're giving him step-by-step -step instructions. We're guiding him where to go. 
We're giving him the assets he needs. In this case here, he's going to fail this particular uh, inspection. We're going to be able to capture the reasons why. We actually can take a picture. We can capture an asset. So we not only know that this particular step of the process failed, we know why it failed, and we actually have evidence that will be available in that report that we talked about earlier. Just another example of guiding him to another step in the process uh, where we can ask him to do a measurement. In this case, it's going to pass. If it was a fail, we could collect data where you could type in, hey, it's actually only 42 inches. So hopefully that gives you a, an idea of really what the CAD-based instructions are doing there versus expert capture. We had the video, we had the images, we had the voice, and really what this brought to the table was the idea of this 3D CAD has given us the ability to actually recognize the geometry so we know the physical product. So you see that image that shows up here it recognizes the, uh, takes the digital image of the CAD, overlays it on the physical, so I recognize the product. So that's really what the 3D CAD is bringing to the table. So these are the ideal use cases for uh, instructs or any type of inspection use cases that you would like to go out and incorporate within your processes. So I'm just gonna keep moving here for the sake of time. I wanna give you guys time to answer questions at the end. Um, and so this is just an example of one of our customers, Harpak Oma, in the uh, packaging and equipment industry, who is leveraging actually pretty much our whole portfolio of offerings, but leveraging both, uh, you know, chalk, expert capture, instruct, which you've seen so far. And in a moment, we're going to show you one more portfolio offering called Studio. Well, let's take a look at Studio. Studio is really designed, and this this has been around for a few years. Uh, very powerful. Uh, AR uh, platform solution here for allowing you to really design and develop any type of um, experience that you would like. The ability to integrate into um, IoT environments or external systems. So just really ex extremely powerful types of use cases. Let me just walk you through a couple examples here. So this first example here, I'm just going to play this one video here as an example of uh, if I want to walk up to a piece of equipment, I've got a, uh, you know, a uh, code here, I can scan the code. And here I'm gonna, you guys have probably heard the terminology of a digital twin, right? So I wanna, I wanna overlay all the digital information on top of this physical piece of equipment. This piece of equipment has been enabled via our IoT platform. I have all the sensors on here collecting data like OEE, as you saw there, parts per minute. So you basically can uh, read data into the AR experience of any type, operational performance data, Here's an example of safety information that you can overlay. So you could have different types of information, just a little more immersive here versus the other applications. You'll see here is an example of a service procedure where you can actually uh, have the operator interact with, please confirm that you're authorized to perform this task. Again, uh, here's the tools required and just a really nice way to guide the person in a step-by-step -step way of how to perform this task. So that's one example there of leveraging 3D guided instructions with IoT incorporated with animations. I'm going to move over here to the second one here. I'll just pause this and I'll come over here. And this is a great example of um, being able to leverage one for product identification. Here you'll notice I just selected the, um, the component. And again, it brought in all of the digital information associated with this physical part. We use this often at trade shows, which is where this video has probably come here. I can just touch a part using the menu on the left hand side here and it's showing me that that part on the physical product by overlaying the digital content. So you can see where there's data coming from other sources as well. I can get things like what's the part number, what's the description. Again, I can have other menu choices. You know, that particular pump is one of our customers called Howden. The product is actually used in the field. So when the field technician goes out to the field, he's actually going to see, you know, it located into uh, another set of environments. Uh, all types of, of uh, different options that you can do leveraging the studio product here. Uh, here, let me see what that product looks like when it's running. Uh, let me see IoT data, et cetera. So just a really lots of different use cases that you can uh, experience there. The, the third one here, and just one more I'm going to show you here, is uh, an example where, you know, you can have the uh, field technician go on and have all the instructions of how to perform the task. Here he's leveraging an iPad. He, he got the what to do and where to go and perform the task. Now he's there. He needs to know how to do it and where to specifically go. 
So here he's being guided by uh, you know, an iPad tablet here. He be able to know exactly where to go. Some of the information in the environment is already smart. He can actually see digital information by looking at the physical products. Uh, he's able to do uh, an inspection routines by looking at things. He can overlay what the he should be seeing and he can be able to mark things complete. You know, we, we have the ability to do all kinds of things now by being able to scan a space and uh, digitize that space with content. So just lots of capabilities to be able to really you know, make a, an environment smart now to be able to allow that frontline worker to be able to perform the job, having the right information to perform the task at hand in a more step-by-step -step way. So hopefully this just gives you a, an idea of what's possible uh, leveraging the, uh, the studio particular product. I'm going to show you one more example before we wrap up. And this is for uh, obviously training. Uh, in today's world, you know, a lot of times people with less travel, this is an example of being able to uh, digitize that physical product. So think about, you know, if you've got a big piece of equipment and you've got guys who travel, uh, you know, to a location, actually learn about the equipment, you can actually provide them you know, self-guided instructions. They can be very interactive here, as you can see with all the tools. Uh, literally, if you're at your home, you're in the airport, you know, you can, you're on the job site, you can actually uh, train yourself or guide yourself through a step-by-step -step process in a very immersive way here, uh, really to perform the task at hand. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of, you know, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, by being able to have better information uh, to perform the job in a more of a step-by-step -step guided fashion that, you know, I will be able to actually perform the task more efficiently, more effectively, um, and be able to actually do the job right the first time, which has obviously a direct impact uh, to the top line and in the bottom line. These are example of additional use cases. So again, lots of different use cases. Hopefully you've seen a lot of different use cases today that could be incorporated from you know, training for maintenance, for operational. Uh, maybe there's some we, we miss. I think we have one more polling question. Um, Rachel, if you could around, um, you know, if there's a particular type of use case you see yourself that would be most valuable to your organization based upon where you are today. You know, a lot of people want to know where, where should we start? Is there a particular use case uh, you see being more valuable to your organization? Give it 15 more seconds here. All right, let's look at the results. 47% said remote assistant and collaboration. 35 said knowledge-based work instruction. 6% CAD-based work instruction. 12% training, uh, product demos, and other. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. I uh, forgot to warn you guys today that I go pretty fast. There's a lot of information we're trying to, to share with you guys in a brief amount of time today that we truly appreciate. I hope that you've been able to really uh, get an idea that there is a lot of uh, benefits in leveraging augmented reality. Uh, the good news is the analysts have been tracking this space now for several years. There is a lot of documented uh, benefits, both from a manufacturing benefits, service benefits point of view. Uh, we've actually uh, worked with Forrester to analyze some of our customers. So if any of you guys would like to read through this Forrester report, you could just reply to this particular uh, webinar and uh, you know, Maddie and myself would be glad to get you out some detailed information about, you know, some of the details around some of these benefits that you could anticipate. Um, hopefully you've got some good ideas about areas that you would like to, you know, explore. How could augmented reality help you with your particular uh, business challenges and opportunities? Uh, many customers want to know, you know, a lot of questions regarding, you know, how do we get started? things of that nature. So we've established a fairly structured process that has been extremely effective in the marketplace in this engagement model. So today I would say we're doing a, you know, an introductory overview of augmented reality with kind of a, a broad approach. We welcome the opportunity to meet with 
any of you guys one on one to have more go through this process of discovery. You know, we could learn a little bit more about your particular organization, your particular business needs, a little bit more about your current state. How do you guys do things today? You know, we could give you a little bit more details about some of the solutions you've seen today, a little bit deeper dive in each particular areas, even allow you guys to experience some of these things hands on. Uh, that's one of the benefits of my job is going out and meeting with clients and bringing the technology, bringing some of the devices, allowing you to experience it hand on because most people want to answer the question, you know, hey, where's the value at? So we actually have a process of helping customers identify, you know, hey, if we started in training or if we started with remote assistance or if we started with these work instructions, do we start? Where do we start? You know, so we've got a great process of really helping you understand the business case and uh, working with you on a whole deployment strategy on uh, what does it take, what resources are required, things of that nature. So what's really been effective by this engagement model has really been able to establish a really close relationship that really helped you answer the question, you know, will we be successful? Not will other people be successful leveraging this solutions, but will can my company be successful? Can me as an organization be successful? And can I personally adopt this technology and benefit from it? So welcome the opportunity to um, to continue the conversation, you know, and love to, to be able to help you answer these questions of, you know, what is the real challenge? You know, how big is it? You know, what would a real solution look like? As you've seen today, we have lots of solutions to solve different problems and you know, really answer what would success look like and, you know, and, and how you'd like to get started. So I think, um, Maddie, before I turn it back over to you, I think there's, is there one more um, survey we'd like to do real quick here? Before we open it up for questions or you wanna do the questions first? I think we're ready to uh, open it up for questions. Oh, actually, you know what I think we do have, before I get into questions, just a couple more slides, Wayne, if we had those at the end. Sure. There we go. All right. First of all, I do want to obviously thank everyone for joining today. Uh, this is part of a series of webcasts that we are hosting as Aquitas on the Maximo online resources and education community. I encourage everyone to sign up if you haven't already for the more community um, and catch our next webcast. It's on November 16th, 11 a.m. Um, the topic of this is going to be around inventory governance and management. I think uh, Every one of us can probably agree that that's one of our biggest challenges in the in the Maximo space is making sure that we can um, standardize and not just standardize but maintain how we're main, how we're uh, um, tracking our inventory. Uh, that's going to be with a speaker, Chris Wigan from a, he's the director of maintenance and reliability at a global cosmetic company. Um, and so make sure to join us then. Um, and then the next slide, Wayne, I do just want to promote. Uh, he, you're a great partner to us. So anyone on here who's planning on uh, being at IMC this December, uh, December 13th through 16th, Mark Weiland, Florida, Wayne's going to be joining us there where, where we'll have uh, not just Aquitas as a sponsor, but we'll be sponsoring an experience lab where Wayne will be leading us in two sessions around augmented reality. One of those being really hands-on uh, where you can actually get your hands on creating one of those uh, augmented reality experiences and see what that's like. So again, appreciate that Wayne for the support there. Uh, all right, with that, we can get into a couple of questions. I saw that we've had a couple come in. Um, I think the first one I'd like to start with Wayne is the question of what are some of the skills required to use AR? Yeah, good question. So good news is we have this broad portfolio of offerings. So it really depends on the problem at hand that you're trying to solve. So we can actually start with obviously uh, remote assistance, which seem to be a high interest to a lot of folks here. Uh, you know, you guys already know how to use a, uh, uh, a phone or a tablet today. So really no additional skills are required to incorporate that, that solution. Uh, one of part of our strategies, as you may have saw with expert capture and instruct, is we really want to be able to uh, allow folks to generate uh, work instructions, leveraging, you know, frontline workers with their knowledge level. So there's no program required, you know, lo the least level of skills required of anyone in the organization would be able to generate work instructions, author those work instructions and manage that whole solution. When you start getting to some of the little more immersive things that you saw today with Studio, you know, someone with a background with, uh, with 3D CAD or animation, uh, things of that nature would be required to be, allow you to be more proficient. The good news is we've got great training programs and, and great partners like with Aquatoss that we can certainly help anyone of any skill level to produce these types of procedures you've seen today. And of course, of integrating this with other applications, just having your own knowledge of the, of the source application. 
Yeah, that, that actually leads to the next question I was gonna, gonna bring up here, although I'm gonna ask myself this one instead of you, Wayne, which is, are any of these products already integrated with Maximo? And the short answer to that is, is not a, a classic integration like we would think of with Maximo through the MIF. However, it is on our roadmap. But what we can do is there's obviously very easy ways that we can add content to a Maximo work order screen, like an expert capture experience where when someone goes out, um, they're going through their job plan, we can launch those experiences directly from the uh, work order so that the technicians in the field have access to that, as well as something like a chop call, you know, the first, the remote collaboration. You know, who's the, who's the team that owns that asset? Who's the expert that owns that asset and that type of repair? Um, let's easily get you connected directly from the, the Maximo work order. Um, and if you'd like to have a more detailed conversation around integration with Maximo, I'd be happy to set up a call with our technical team. All right, the next question I have is, uh, Wayne, how do you how do we deal with the adoption of this new technology? You know, good question. You know, the best way to deal with the adoption is to let people experience it. And that's really part of our solution overview workshop. You know, when folks really um, understand that we can actually capture the, our content, we can actually generate this type of work instructions and we can see the value of consuming this this content uh, then they'll be uh, they'll be much wanting to be a part of the process so engaging them early in the process letting them see the benefits the benefits at the executive level is that you're going to improve the top line and bottom line of the business at the management level you're going to be able to you know enable your workforce to uh, perform in the way that you desire to help meet the metrics and at the at the workforce level at the frontline worker level I mean most people want to do a good job for you so allowing them to be partake in the process. Um, for those who create training content and do a lot of training, I mean, this is a, a faster, easier way to be able to not only create content, but be able to manage this content and the distribution of this content. So just engaging people in the process, you know, having some really good goals around, okay, we want to, you know, develop 30 work instructions in the first 60 days, and we want them consumed in training and by these particular uh, field workers, you know, you know, getting it out there, allowing people to see the benefits of it, uh, when we do these on-site workshops, I like to really allow people to experience it firsthand, and then you'll really see the ideas come on, come alive regarding, uh, okay, it's not, it's not um, can we do this? It's like, where should we get started first? Where's the value and, and the other parts come into the play there? Yep, perfect. Another question that came in is, would a large organization bring this in-house eventually with PTC support? I think the short answer to that is absolutely, but Wayne, I'll let you speak to the process of a large organization adopting solutions like this. Well, we have customers of all sizes, you know, small, medium, and large. Um, and you know, most customers, part of our strategy is to enable you to, when you say bring this inside your, you know, maybe to create these work instructions yourself, to do it yourself with our application. Yes, that is our goal is that this is a business ready application. We really teach you how to create work instructions uh, we have a full uh, content management capability in the application so that you can manage the content and distribute the content. So uh, we have very, very large customers using this application, with thousands of users and, and medium-sized companies and small companies. Perfect. This is the next generation work instruction. So That's right. Uh, let's see, just one or two more. Uh, how long does it take to implement? Again, it just depends on the particular portfolio offering. Uh, for example, with obviously Chalk, we can turn it on today. You know, obviously uh, uh, with uh, add some users and we're good to go, a little bit of training. Uh, so I would say with Expert Capture and Instruct, you know, if it takes you, uh, you know, you, you're looking at days and weeks uh, with those types of deployments. So these are not science projects. So, uh, you know, it just really depends on the scope of the project, but, you know, welcome the opportunity to have those conversations. This is, you'll be very impressed with, um, the scalability and the uh, and the speed to deployment with double portfolio. Yep, I can attest to that. I uh, myself downloaded Chalk and was using it in the same day uh, last summer when it was uh, first made public during the pandemic. So, all right, I think that covers all of our questions for today. If there did, if you sent in a question we didn't get to it, we'll make sure to follow up with you directly. Um, again, thanks for joining us today. We will be sending out the recording along with the slides, and we will also include a survey. Um, and we'd appreciate any feedback on that. Again, encourage you to join our future sessions and hope to see you guys uh, in December at IMC. Thanks very much, uh, very much for joining today.